Welcome to Module 6 of the IBM MQ Certificate Management Tutorial using commercially signed certs. In this module we're going to go ahead and uh, actually configure MQ. So we've uh, created a baseline in, in uh, the Module 2 of a couple queue managers and channels and so forth. Then we generated a cert signing request, had GoDaddy sign the certificate, received those back in, and did a refresh on the uh, queue manager to uh, accept the new key store into memory. So the first configuration that we're going to do is uh, we're going to copy the key store out of the ash SSL directory and then we're going to delete its personal certificate. And the reason for that is the very first thing we want to set up with SSL is server only authentication where there's only one personal certificate in the mix. There's a lot of things that can go wrong if you get the file system permissions wrong, get the password stash wrong, the label of the certificate wrong, and rather than having to debug personal certificates on both sides and a two-way handshake, deleting this certificate, and there you can see it's uh, we've actually deleted the personal certificate, and we're going to do a refresh security. Uh, the reason for this is that when you uh, have SSL CAuth optional on the channel, if there's a personal certificate in the key store, it will be sent. And if it is sent, it will be authenticated whether it's optional or not. So we delete that, and then this will work as a server-only authentication. So uh, we previously had these channels up and running. And we'll go take a look at them now, and we see that they are both inactive. And we haven't changed the SSL parameters on the channels yet. So let's make sure that they're still working. So they'll put a message in there that says, test the channels without TLS. And uh, we saw this in an earlier module. These are loopback queues. We'll send a message to the other side. Message comes back. We'll browse it in the local queue. And if everything goes well, it will have uh, kicked off the channel initiators in both queue managers, and the channels will be running. So let's go take a look at that real fast. Sure enough, both channels are now running. Now these are the two that we saw a second ago were inactive. Now obviously, if you're going to change the channel parameters, the channel's got to be stopped in order to pick those new parameters up. So we'll go ahead and stop it here. Now this is a channel from Ash to Birch. And we're going to leave the one uh, coming back alone for right now, specifically because we're testing this without a personal certificate on the Ash queue manager. So we'll go ahead and set the receiver channel up with, uh, I just used Null Shaw. This will make sure that the handshake works. Um, it's uh, a way that you can do authentication without actually doing uh, encryption on the channel. So we set both of those channels up with encryption, uh, null shaw, and we've uh, told it to use an optional SSL CAuth on the server side, put a message in that remote queue, and now we see that there are two messages in the local queue and that the sender channel is running. This is the one that we just updated with the SSL parameters. So we take a look at the channel status and scroll over a little bit to the right. You'll see that there is a short peer name now. So the serial number for the channel, I'm sorry, the serial number for the certificate and the certificate distinguished name are now listed in the channel status. So that's how you know that the SSL is actually working. And there's the distinguished name. So you can see there that the distinguished name of the Birch queue manager uh, is in that certificate. So we did get a certificate from the Birch queue manager as expected. So once again we're going to stop the channels and now what we want to do is mutual authentication 
and so that means that the uh, SSLC auth that we had set to optional is now going to be required. There we go. And if we go back to uh, Oh, before I actually set this up with a personal certificate on Ash, let's run a test now because we know we don't have a personal certificate in the Ash queue manager and we just set the channel's SSL auth to required. And you'll see what happens is it sits in the transmit queue there and it does not immediately go to the local queue like it did before and then we see that the channel is now in retry state. So this works as expected. There is no personal certificate for the Ash Queue Manager, and SSL Auth is required, which says the client, in this case the Ash side, must send a personal certificate. Since it wasn't able to do that, then the channel fails as expected. So uh, a few minutes ago, we copied the key store for the Ash Queue Manager out to our home space and then deleted the personal certificate in our local key store. So all we have to do to get that certificate back is just copy it back. Now we once again have our personal certificate. You see that the uh, file size has increased because there's a certificate in that KDB file now. Now, before we did the run MQSC command for refresh security, um, can do that through Explorer as well. And if we list off that key store, we see yes, we do indeed have the uh, certificate we're expecting in there. Uh, get to know those display <laughs> certificate commands. Uh, very frequently, I'll work with people who. Um, believe that the key store or the signer, uh, the certificate or the signer certificate that they're expecting is in the key store, and we will walk the certificate chain and find out that some piece of that is missing. So we had left this channel in retry. Uh, go ahead and stop it and restart it after the uh, refresh of the queue manager, and that message that we put previously is now. Uh, in the local queue, so that went across the channels and came back. So at this point, we've tested server-only authentication, and then we've tested mutual authentication, where both sides had to present a certificate. And now what we'll see is if you go to the channel status on the Birch side, you see that there's a certificate in there for the ASH queue manager that we didn't have before. Now this is great except that essentially what we've done is we've created a policy that says the queue manager will accept any certificate that GoDaddy has issued or will issue as long as it's currently valid. We haven't actually told either of these things to accept just our certificates. So what I did was I copied the common name out of the certificate that I was looking at a second ago, and then I can paste that in to the SSL peer field. And now we will only accept a certificate from a uh, queue manager that we trust. This is very important to always do um, some sort of distinguished name filtering. Now if you read my article in DeveloperWorks, uh, you'll notice that I specified uh, several OUs, organizational units, that can be in the distinguished name. Uh, unfortunately, the CA Browser Forum has decided that that's not really a useful field for any of its customers to use. And if you specify an OU, um, it will be deleted for you. And in fact, um, uh, I tried that with the ASH uh, certificates, and that's why uh, when you saw me provision certificates in this video, I was provisioning Birch. When I did the ASH certificates, I actually specified a number of things, all of which were wiped out uh, during the provisioning because I'm, I purchased the basic validation. Now, I, I didn't have the uh, $1,700 or whatever it is to purchase the extended validation, 
uh, even though I'm getting a refund on the certs from GoDaddy, I, I didn't want to uh, uh, drop 1700 bucks for the video. Uh, but I was told that the OUs will be wiped out even in the extended validation certificates. So that's it. We've created uh, SS uh, TLS and hooked up Q Managers end to end. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please let me know uh, how you liked it and what other things that you would like to see.